Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make molten chocolate cakes, also known as lava cakes, and this is what it looks like. As its name implies, we are serving these cakes hot from the oven. And that's when the outside is set, but I actually just baked this off. But when you break through, look at that. The center is kind of almost like a pudding. It's very soft and creamy and hot <laughs> and so good. I call this a real special occasion dessert, although it's not difficult to make. So the first thing you will need to do, about maybe an hour before you're going to make your batter, you want to separate your eggs because it's much easier to separate cold eggs. So what you need is three large eggs and put your whites in one bowl, your yolks in the other, then just cover them and let them come up to room temperature. So as far as weight goes, that you will need 90 grams of egg whites and 60 grams of egg yolks. So once you've done that and you're ready to make your batter, then you want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 200 degrees Celsius. It is a hot oven for these, kind of like a souffle. And for this, you will need uh, four, like six to eight ounce, so one, what's 180 to 240 milliliter size and uh, heat proof dishes. Now I'm using Ramkins. You could use custard cups, or if you didn't have either of those, you could just use muffin tins for this. And what you want to do is to first butter the inside. So what I did is just melted a little bit of butter and then I'm taking a pastry brush and just really uh, butter the inside. You, I always serve, cause I like, you know, I think these are kind of cute. I always serve my molten chocolate cakes in the ramkins because I like the look of them. You can take them out and that's why I'm buttering my mold so you can if you want you can get them out. <laughs> and then once you butter them really well then you want to dust the insides with now you can use two things you can use granulated white sugar or super fine sugar and what you do is just put a little sugar in there and I usually do this over the sink, but just swish it around there. And then let's put that back in there. i gonna tap that to get out any excess. So sugar is one option. And the other is unsweetened cocoa powder. So again, just put some in there. And around we go. I said sink is good for this. <laughs> so there we have it. So now, um, messy hands. Molten chocolate cakes, there's really only four main ingredients. You have your chocolate, you have butter, eggs, and sugar. So obviously each ingredient is important. So especially the chocolate, because your cakes are on, chocolate cakes are only going to taste as good as the chocolate you use. So use the best you can afford. And you will need six ounces, which is 170 grams. Now you can use either a semi-sweet or a bittersweet. So that means uh, use a chocolate somewhere between 55 and 70% um, cocoa content. And then if you're using like a chocolate bar, then like I'm using here, then coarsely chop your chocolate. And then you will need a half a cup, 113 grams of butter. And I cut my butter into pieces just so it melts faster. Now you can use salted or unsalted, whatever your favorite is. I'm using unsalted, that's my preference and it's what I always have in the house. So what I'm gonna do is just add like a pinch of salt, an eighth of a teaspoon. If you were using salted, then you don't need that salt. So you will need a saucepan of simmering water and use, of course, use a heat proof bowl. I like stainless steel. So I'm just going to let that uh, melt together. Okay, so our chocolate butter have melted. I'm just going to take it off the heat. And I'm just going to put that aside to cool. So now I'm going to just get rid of my burner 
bring my mixer in and then we will carry on with our batter. So now our chocolate is cooled down. You don't want it hot. So we're, we can make our batter. So if you're using a stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment or you could use a hand mixer for this. So take your three uh, egg yolks, put that in there, along with a third of a cup, that's 65 grams of granulated white sugar. And then I'm going to beat these two together on medium high speed until they become really nice and thick and pale. So that's going to take a few minutes. Okay, that looks good. Let's scrape this. And then I will show you. See, it's really thick and pale. That's what you're looking for. Really nice and thick. Okay, so now we are going to flavor this with one teaspoon. That's uh, four grams of pure vanilla extract. The vanilla is simply for flavoring, so if you would prefer to leave it out, you could do that. I'm just going to beat that in. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add our melted and cooled chocolate mixture to our eggs. So pour that in. Now I'm going to beat it in. You could just, if you were doing this, you know, with a hand mixer, you could just fold it in with the spatula. Good. I'll do the rest by hand. So now, let's use your spatula. So now, I'm going to actually pour this back into my chocolate bowl because we need to whip our egg whites and I need my bowl. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to wash my bowl and then when we come back, we will whip our egg whites. So now we are ready to whip our egg whites. So if you have a stand mixer, you, you want to use your whisk attachment this time or you can use your hand mixer. So we're going to put our egg whites that are at room temperature now in our bowl. And then I'm also going to add a quarter of a teaspoon, which is one gram of cream of tartar. You can find cream of tartar in the spice section of your grocery store. And that's going to, the reason I use that, it stabilizes your uh, egg whites and it kind of prevents you from over whipping them, which is good. Uh, if you don't have, you can't find cream of tartar, you could leave it out or you could just use like a little bit, like quarter of a teaspoon of lemon juice. It's just good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to beat my egg whites on medium, medium, low speed until everything gets mixed together and they start to like just about form soft peaks. Okay, so that took a few minutes to get it to this point, so I'll show you. You can see here, they're just barely holding the peak. So that's what you're looking for. So now I'm going to um, increase my mixer speed to medium high and I'm going to gradually add one tablespoon, 15 grams of granulated white sugar. And then I'm going to continue to beat until they just like barely hold stiff peaks. I'll show you when I get there. That 
looks good. When you start to see the tracks, you'll see a real uh, definition of the tracks of your whisk in your meringue. That's usually when you want to, you know, at least stop it and look at it. So this, well, it's kind of almost not quite stiff. But that's, that's what I like, the point I like to um, stop. I really like make meringue. You know, you start with just whites, this kind of opaque uh, mixture, and then you get this wonderfully shiny, it's glossy, it's thick, it's just beautiful. So now we have a thick chocolate mixture and a light meringue. We don't want to add all of mer our meringue into our chocolate mixture at once. What we're going to do is add just, you know, a little, and that will lighten it. And then just fold it in. The important thing is you want to fold the meringue completely into the chocolate mixture and then stop mixing because you, we don't want to deflate our meringue and then they won't because molten chocolate cakes, you put them in a hot oven and they rise, kind of like a souffle. It's kind of cool. So it's that air in that meringue that gives us that. So I'm going to add, I'll add half of that. So use a spatula or you could use a whisk and then just you know, big strokes, make sure you get around the outside. And if you will notice, there is no flour. I know some uh, recipes call for maybe a one or two tablespoons of flour. I don't like flour in my molten chocolate cakes. I want them kind of like a souffle, very soft, creamy, so no flour. I know I'm going to get that question. No, there is no flour. So for those people that want to go gluten-free, this is your recipe. scrape around the outside and we are done. Just make sure you get to the bottom of your bowl. Get all that meringue mixed into the whole chocolate mixture. So that's it. Now, what is really cool about this recipe is you can bake it off right away or you don't have to. So say you're going to have company at night and you want to make it in the morning, you can do that. And all you do is you fill your whatever kind of, you know, your rampkins with your mixture. I'm using an ice cream scoop. You use a spoon or a measuring cup, whatever. Just evenly divide your batter. Okay, so that looks good. Just I'm gonna smooth out the tops there. So now, like I said, we can put them into our oven right away, or what actually I'm going to do, I'll bake two off, and I'll put two away. So just cover them and put them into the refrigerator. And then when you want to, you know, later, you can just bake them off cold. So obviously, if you bake them off cold, it's going to take, you know, a couple of minutes longer to bake. Now, um, I normally, I would say your batter can sit maybe up to 12 hours, but to tell you the truth, like this morning, I baked it like 24 hours after I made the batter and they turned out fine. So you can, I would say up to 24 hours. So uh, everyone's oven is a little different. Now, if you noticed, I did put my rampkins on a baking sheet, much easier to lift, but I'm going to say somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. How long you bake them is how firm the center of your molten chocolate cakes will be. If you, you like the really soft in the center, bake it a little less. You get what I mean? Um, so what you want is they will rise. They will look set around the outside. You want the center, because we want it soft, right, the center. So the centers will still look a little wet, and if you kind of go like this, they'll wobble a little bit. 
So, and cracking is normal, so don't worry if yours cracks. So I'm gonna, I say typically, I like mine at about 12 minutes, because I like it soft, but not too soft. So gauge from that. <laughs> So our molten chocolate cakes are done. So put your pan on a wire rack, and if I kind of shake them, they're still a little jiggly in the center. You can see the outside is set. If I kind of touch the inside in the center, it's soft, just the way I like them. So now they're really hot, so I'm not gonna eat it right now. So I'm gonna let them cool, you know, three, five minutes, and then when we come back, we will try one. So I let the cake uh, cool maybe five minutes. As you can see, it has deflated. That's normal. Now, I like to serve them in the ramkins. If you wanted to take them out, you could just take, you know, an offset spatula, run it around the, the edge, and then invert it onto your plate. So how do you serve them? Well, you could dust the top with some cocoa powder, powdered sugar, and then you could just eat it eat it just like this or <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break the center and I'm going to put some I'm going to be naughty here <laughs> I mean why not go for broke right um, I'm going to put a scoop of vanilla ice cream coffee ice cream caramel ice cream would be good other choices you could put a dollop of whipped cream some creme fraiche clotted cream Really? Some chocolate sauce? It's up to you how many calories you want. But, oh, I'm going to just take a little. I need some ice cream. Okay, that's, that's really good. <laughs> it's a special dessert, right? Don't count calories here. Um, you have it's it's soft and pudding like and so chocolatey so good and rich and then the the little ice cream just tempers everything and then you got the hot and the cold really good now this is a fairly large um size so you could make them in smaller instead of four you can make six or what i do if i don't finish it i cover it i put it into the fridge because to tell you the truth i love these cold from the fridge i mean that they all it's almost like a kind of like a brownie then it kind of firms up or you could reheat it the next day but either way so you can have them hot you can have the room temperature or you can have it cold so they will keep in the fridge once you bake them off a couple days, so you can have them over a few days. So I'm, you got to try this one. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.